for news, and we are here learning how to survive the zombie apocalypse. Then, have you always wanted to adopt a pet but think you didn't have the time? Heartland Humane Society may have an option for you. And finally, we have Beaver Sports reporter Josh Warden to tell us about the USC football game in our Monday Night Sports segment. We will have all that and more on tonight's edition of the Beaver News. Good evening and welcome to your Monday night edition of the Beaver News. I'm Julia Cameron. And I'm Conrad Cartmel. We're glad you could join us this evening. As anyone who walked around campus during the past few days is surely aware, Dads and Family Weekend was in full swing Saturday and Sunday. One of the most notable events held as part of the weekend's festivities was the comedy show at LaSalle Stewart Center. The show starred stand-up comedians Tom Cotter and Oregon native Dave Anderson. He is known for being featured on shows such as Star Search and Comedy Club Network, as well as being an Emmy Award-winning co-host on AM Northwest. The other comedian, Tom Cotter, is most well known for being the first comedian to make it to the final rounds of America's Got Talent. Although neither show quite sold out, turnout was excellent with most of the 1,200 seat LaSalle Center being filled for each performance. Dad's Weekend also featured an event with former NFL star Dick Buckus. The football legend answered questions in an Ask Me Anything formatted session. Buckus spoke about how he felt about the game of football as it is played today and also address the issue of steroids in sports. Buckus's I Play Clean organization is devoted to keeping high school football players from using steroids, which are known to cause a variety of health problems. He also pointed out that steroids are illegal and are a form of cheating. Throughout the session, Buckus was candid and engaged, and the people in attendance there were thrilled with the event. The final mission of Humans vs. Zombies was held on Sunday across campus, promising excitement for all involved. It didn't fail to deliver exactly that. Conrad went out to the battlefield to get the story. Throughout the last week, campus has been filled with Nerf blasters, marshmallows, and the undead. We learned that even though not all students are supportive of humans v. Zombies, none of the players let that get in the way of their fun. Despite the popularity of the event, it still battles negative perception. We talk to players to find out what HBZ means to them and how they respond to people who make fun of the game. What I personally do, you just shrug it off. Everyone's there's going to be negative negativity somewhere. The main thing is just we protect our players as best as we can. So you don't think it affects the game very much? It there have been instances where it has, but we do what we can to uh, stop and reduce it. But yeah, don't just shoot wantonly. Oh one person can call that retreat, so designate one person. Yeah. Okay. Yes! <laughs> I see it as a, a great way for people to make friends and also get familiar with the, the campus and whatnot. The event emphasizes inclusivity, so there's room for anyone who wants to join. So, Conrad, what was it like being part of the battle? It was actually really fun. Uh, my favorite part was w right at the beginning of the battle, all the humans set up in their fortress, and then the zombies slowly crept on, up on them. And at the last minute, they all just charged the human encampment. And it wasn't real, but it was still really exciting. Wow, that's crazy. Are you thinking of doing it, maybe? Joining? Uh, yeah, next spring term, they're hosting another game. And I'm really thinking it might be a fun thing to do. That's fun. I've always wanted to know how to play. Sounds cool. A team of OSU scientists working for the Oregon Climate Change Research Institute have recently discovered that about the Northwest is about to see an increased risk in forest health along with earlier snowmelt, leading to low summer stream flows. This puts forests in danger of increased wildfires, diseases, and indirect results that go along with climate change. Although the Northwest has not been too vulnerable to many climate-related health risks, their report states that if the issue continues, that the effects of our climate change are more likely to be negative than positive. This could include an increase in morbidity, heart-related illnesses, air pollution, and a variety of diseases. 
The solution, they say, is to implement policies and make smarter decisions on where to have infrastructures that do not hurt our environment. After a long day of classes and work, what sounds better than being warmly greeted at home by a cat or dog? Many students long for their own pet but feel that they don't have enough time to care for it. But Heartland Humane Society may just have the answer. This is Elephant Ears, and he is currently looking for a home. The Heartland Humane Society is hoping that students looking to adopt will come here first, even if the students are not sure they can keep the animal long term. We try really hard to counsel people on maybe being foster parents, you know, if they're students, so they can short term care for the animals here, but um, not have the lifelong commitment of, you know, taking care of them their whole lives. Helga here is one of the many abandoned cats that is looking for a home as well. And with kitten season approaching, cage space will be sparse. We're on the verge of kitten season. We got in our, in our first litter of kittens um, maybe about three weeks ago. Um, and they were about six weeks old. And they just came in, got spayed and neutered, and were adopted all very quickly yesterday. During their stay at the shelter, all the animals are given plenty of love and attention until someone gives them a home. If you are ever in a position where you can't take care of your pet, the Humane Society urges you to bring them in and to remember that animal abandonment is against the law. This is Sam Popoff for Beaver News. Our Monday night wouldn't be complete without Josh Warden giving us the breakdown on this last weekend's USC game in our sports segment. Thanks, Julia. The Beavers attempted to win their fourth consecutive game over USC at home last Friday. The Trojans had won two out of their last three games under their interim head coach, Ed Orgeron, and took control from the beginning. They led 14-0 at the end of the first quarter, but OSU exploded in the second period with two touchdowns in a span of just 14 seconds. First, it was Brandon Cooks hauling in a 27-yard touchdown pass from Sean Mannion that cut the lead in half. The Beavers tacked on another seven points on the Trojans' first play of the next drive when Ryan Murphy brought back an interception to the house to tie the game at 14. After that, however, it was all USC. The Trojans added seven points on their next drive and didn't let up, finishing with a 31-14 victory. Sean Mannion ended with 277 yards and a touchdown, but was also picked off three times, doubling his total of three interceptions he had coming into Friday. The Beavers had their best game running the ball as Teron Ward picked up 53 yards on only eight carries. Linebacker DJ Alexander and tight end Caleb Smith did not play, but both should be back after the bye week. Oregon State heads into their last bye week of the season with a 6-3 record. Their next game is on November 16th against Arizona State, a week before their last home game against the Washington Huskies. And that is your Monday Night Sports segment. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. I'm Conrad Cartmow. I'm Josh Warden. And I'm Julia Cameron. We're glad you could join us this evening. For more of your Beaver news, make sure to watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter or Instagram at Beaver News. Thanks and have a good night.